What's up, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Uh, and today, we don't need charts. We don't need anything. We're going to talk about something. It's a popular question. I do get asked. It's, uh, we'll say it's the part two to uh, how to manage risk the correct way. Uh, what, no matter which version of that video you've seen, uh, the first one you guys probably saw was 1% stop loss the correct way. Uh, and before we, we get to it, we'll just do a, a, a quick brush up. Okay. Now, we know how, we know how to manage risk. Uh, just the, the quick is you're going to buy a stock at $11. Your absolute I'm getting out stop price is $10. That's $1 per share. If you're only going to risk $100, you're only going to buy 100 shares. Now that number does not correlate to your trading account. That doesn't matter if you have a million dollar account, a hundred thousand dollar account, or a $1,000 account. I would might have a question as to why you're risking a hundred dollars if you have a thousand dollar account, but that's, that's in a completely different video. Um, you know, it's, uh, there's an emotional level to trade. If it's too cheap, you just don't care. All right. Uh, you know, people will spend $2 on a scratchers cause who cares? It's two bucks. Uh, but if I said, go spend a hundred thousand dollars on a scratcher, eh, <laughs> maybe they don't want to risk that. Uh, you know, so find that number in between. How much am I comfortable risking? Cause you have to find that sweet spot because if it's too cheap, you make, just dumb decisions. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'll buy that because I don't care. Risk management out the window. Uh, or you risk way too much. You're in way over your head. That's going to trigger you, right? That's where you're triggering anxiety. That's where you will lose sleep. It's where you will make emotional decisions. It's where you get in trouble. So you have to find that uh, your emotional level of trading. Uh, and so the question I'm answering today is, uh, let's say you have a $50,000 account. 1% stop losses has been your been your thing and uh, well now uh, you've had a few trades your your $50,000 account is now 60 70 70,000 are you still risking 1% of that um, you know how do you do that now I'm going to answer this with two scenarios because ultimately you are going to have to to make that decision uh, I'll give you a popular scenario I've seen and I'll tell you my story, actually, because uh, going back, this was one of my, if I had to start over, one of the biggest things I would change. Okay, so what I see a lot is, uh, call him Little Timmy. Little Timmy's got a $6,000 account and uh, really wants dad's approval. <laughs> uh, he takes his 6000 he grows it to 10000 okay? Dad says, good job, son, pats him on the back. Now, you know you're under PDT, so he's taking three day trades in a rolling five days. Maybe swing trading in there, but definitely a lot slower. Uh, so, dad recognizes the growth, says, Good job, completely harmless, gives him the extra, uh, what do you say, we grew it to 10 grand, gives him 15, 16 grand, bumps him up, gets him above that PDT, right? He says, Okay, now you get your day trade on above 25,000 in the United States. Now we can day trade unlimited. Uh, so he does that. And I've seen this a lot. Little Timmy loses dad's money. Uh, loses it a lot because he goes from risking his normal levels. He was fine with that amount. Uh, and he was risking what he was, well, maybe he was risking 1% of his 6,000 or 10,000. Now he's risking 1% of more than, uh, more than double, right? If he goes from six to 25, that's four times as much. He just shocked his system. No, so that's where you get in trouble. Like I, I was, well, I was comfortable with risking a hundred bucks. Now I'm risking three, four hundred bucks, and he doesn't realize that that's that's way too much for him. Uh, so we, now things start to spiral out of hand. So uh, as you grow your account, let's say you do YOLO and earnings play. Uh, you know. I'm not a home run person. I trade for income. My trades need to reflect that. My bills come every month, so I need to have money coming in every month. I can't not be a profitable trader or I lose money. So there's things I can't do. Like I can't take, I, I do now because, well, I have plenty of money. I have a different account for, for fun stuff. But, uh, you know, as a business, I can't afford to be taking YOLO trades and pissing away half my account, you know? Uh, but let's say you do. If you're in the game long enough, you're going to hit a home run, right? You're, you're going for the base hit, but something's going to go off. Uh, 
there's a tweet, there's an announcement, there's a stock split, you know, and it just happens. And, and you know, if you've, if you've seen some stocks move, if you've been here relatively for a while, you've seen stocks just go off. Uh, now, everybody in that particular ticker, they didn't just now hop in. Some people have been in there. And so your account shoots up. Now, all of a sudden, you're in the big leagues. <laughs> you start risking more. Again, you've left your emotional tolerance behind. Uh, and that's where mistakes get made. Now, what I did was actually the exact opposite. Uh, almost for a decade, uh, I grew my account and I kept it at the same level. Right? That's it. And I, when I say I was a robot and consistent, it was the same level. Regardless of my income made from it, I'm pulling that money out and I kept the, the balance in there. That's it. Uh, for, like I said, almost a decade. It wasn't until 2020, I made so much money, I just didn't know what to do with it. Uh, I, you know, I, I was paying bills, funded more of the investment accounts, I just did a bunch, I, I just started buying toys, uh, that was it. Even on top of that, still, like I made more money on three Mondays, <laughs> back to back to back. Uh, each Monday was a PR, just more than the previous uh, more on one of those Mondays than like I would make all year. Uh, came pretty close. And uh, so my trading account, I was like, well, I'll just keep it in there. And uh, now I adapted to the, the, the new balance uh, fairly quickly. But even there, there was an adjustment for me. Uh, I, I, you know, my account went from swinging a few grand to up and down 50 to 70 grand. <laughs> like That was an adjustment. Uh, so, you know... Looking back, I can tell you now, money makes more money. If you're if you're properly trading in this business, you know, if you're for some reason this is the first video you've ever found of mine. Um, I don't know how the algorithm would ever teach you that, but uh, your trading's not easy, but it's consistent. Once you understand the mechanics, there's only so many scenarios that can happen. Uh, and the more money you have, it's a percentage game. You do just make more. I wish I would have grown my account so much more. I was so quick to, to quit a job and say, I'm a day trader. <laughs> I made enough to make what I was making, and that was all she wrote. I was out. Uh, I quit the growth phase too soon. Uh, and then on top of that, I didn't grow my account. I just stayed there. And that was a huge setback. Uh, looking back... I don't know what would have been more profitable, buying Bitcoin or growing my account. Just with, with the consistency, all I do is just keep it going and let, you know, it percent it, let interest just do its thing. Uh, so, to answer the question, should you risk more now that your account is bigger? I, I think are you in the growth phase or are you in the flat income phase? Uh, as a trader. I would say if you think you're in the flat phase, you're probably not. You're probably close to halfway there. Uh, most of you guys just don't realize, especially if you're brand new. If you started trading in 2020, right? I'm recording this now. It's 2022, February 22. Uh, you're brand new. That's it. If you've been doing this under three, four, five years, you're new. There's a lot of things the stock market can throw at you. Uh, and losing streaks, no matter who you are, are a thing. There's still red days, there's still red weeks, uh, and, and do you have enough to cover that? Uh, I was fortunate enough that most of my trading was just in a bull market, so it was very forgiving. But yeah, looking back, I wish I would have grown it a, a lot more. I wish I would have just taken it to a whole nother level, and then at that point, I would have money feeding me money while I'm trading and growing more money. Like, the train would just be unstoppable. Uh, but... The, the, so that's one side of the coin. The other side is how do you do it without shocking the system? If you take that home run, that doesn't mean you need to trade with all of that money. It doesn't like if you take your account from 50 to 100,000, you hit the home run. It just went crazy. Uh, you know, let's just pretend your risk management was fine and, and you hit the home run. Uh, not necessarily a YOLO play. Uh, just because you hit that doesn't mean you need to trade with all that. If you were risking 1,000 and that was your your, tr your trade give or take, bump it up to 1,100, 1,200. 
I'm going to fit this much in my risk tolerance and start nudging that up. Don't shock the system, but nudge that up. That will grow a lot slower than your account will. Your account can grow a lot faster, especially with any volatility and any kind of movement out there. Uh, your account can grow a lot faster than your uh, emotional level of trading. So uh, my, my opinion or takeaway would be to just keep growing. When you don't have to budget anymore, then you're probably at the, uh, the we can hang out phase. We can start doing things with our money. We can start having, we can relax. We don't need to worry about growth, growth, growth. We can start pulling a little bit more out. If you've bought toys and you didn't have to look at your bank account, things are fine. You're probably at that phase. If you're asking, should I quit my job? The answer is no. Uh, should I keep growing my account? The answer is yes. If you're having to ask that question, you're still in the growth phase. Uh, keep it going. When you wake up and you just don't need to ask that and you're comfortable, you don't care, there's no anxiety, no what ifs, then you're probably ready at that point. At that point, you're probably good to go. It takes a while to get there. Uh, so, I'll end it here. Uh, I don't know if I could wrap that up into one or two sentences. Hopefully, you guys let me know down below. What are you guys doing? Are you staying in the growth phase? Did you? What, what, did you ever hit the hit that top for you? Uh, or how did how did you grow? I, this is still on YouTube. This is not in my course. I will put my course. I'll just put it in the comments down below. If you guys want to get to know me more, uh, where I do go live every day and and have my chat. Uh, that's that's all there. Plus all the course videos. But since this is YouTube, uh, I still want to hear from you guys. Still like the well, the community aspect. Uh, you hit some runs. How much more are you risking now? Or did you get that? First of all, that anxiety. Sorry, I shouldn't. That anxiety is your body telling you something's different. Your account grew, and and it's a good thing. But when you go from hey fifty thousand just jump to a hundred thousand I'm gonna risk from one thousand to two thousand that that hey that 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 flight response that's your body saying are you sure and that's a good time to ask yourself am I sure you know don't you want to keep it you want to just keep flirting with that line don't jump over it because that's how you get yourself in a spiral anyway I'll end it here uh, anyway all the YouTube stuff right like uh, like comment subscribe all the cool stuff I'll see you guys in the next video.